from a startling shade of pink. That's I pulled it too long the other day. So today's yums is months, yums, not days, months, <coughs> the birthplace of democracy. So I'll be honest, I don't know where that is. Greece? Rome? Something like that? I can't really tell. Because the picture kind of got s smashed. <gasps> Why is this box? It is grease! Hey! The magical! Have I been to Greece? I don't remember. I'm gonna stop trying to remember because clearly I can't. <gasps> Look, there's a thing in here! Ooh, show your trick or treaters that trying new foods isn't scary! <gasps> it's a fancy yums box of trick or treatiness. It's a first ever Halloween yums box. Oh, six different candies from six different countries. Your trick or treat is looking to choose what. You know what? <laughs> if I'm buying the box, uh, I'm gonna keep the candy from myself. But uh, that is interesting. So if you want a candy from around the world for trick or treating time, have at it. But uh, today we are in Greece where there's Olympia and Athens and Santorini and the Sea of Crete and all kinds of other fun things. Welcome to Greece! Let's write the dude in. Greetings from the Hellenic Republic. Yes, that's the official name of the country most of us call Greek. Uh, or Greece. I didn't know that. This month, however, we're not just traveling to the heart of the Mediterranean, we're traveling through time and space. Just this time. We'll visit the ancient city-states of Athens and Sparta, explore some millennia-old Greek mythology, and get a feel for the progressive and gorgeous modern nation, all while tasting some truly unforgettable yums. Let's get the Greek adventure started! So what have we got here? I want dessert, because I had lunch. I'm sure this was in my mailbox, so I'm sure anything with chocolate has melted a little bit. What do we got? We got a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, chippy type things. Here's the yum bag. We could slice that open and find out what's inside. But you know what? Here's chocolate. You know what's kind of funny? I was just discussing with someone, you know who you are if you watch these, about everyone's fascination with wafer foods and how we don't quite understand what the thing is with the wafer foods but here we go with uh with a uh, more waferage like like what 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 i don't know it's it's a it's it's a whole thing apparently but this is the uh, totis i think i've been to greece before because i remember that brand serenata finger and that's all we get so it's a finger it's unfortunate it's let's eat it da -da -da. Milk chocolate coated wafer with cocoa cream filling. There are so many like this. Why do we keep getting wafer things? But whatever. Obsessed with wafers? No! I'm bored with wafers. I get Kit Kats and Nutty Bars here and all the other wafer things. I don't need more wafers. We sure are, obviously. We try them practically everywhere we go. Clearly! But this month we're even more excited than usual because Greece is where wafers were invented. Well then, now we have more insight. Ancient Greeks first started cooking up the treats, then called them uh, Ob Oblios in 146 BC. 146 BC. Numbers are hard when you're, when you're sunburned. They would pour batter between two hot plates attached to wooden sticks, think of them as ancient waffle irons, cook the wafers to perfection, and then top them with herbs and cheese. Fast forward to 2000 years, to 1970, when Greek company Totis Bingo created their first flagship product, the Serenata Wafer. This rich chocolatey take on the millennia-old tradition quickly became a household name across modern Greece. With four crispy wafers slathered in cocoa creme, coated in rich chocolate, and drizzled with even more chocolate, it's hard to imagine Greece ever improving upon this recipe, but with the country's history of innovation, it's bound to happen. We guess we'll just have to come back and see! Future time! Until then, let's eat the said melted. Yes, it was clearly melted at some point. Oh, it's still kind of melty. It is a little bit warm in my room, so that's probably my fault. But we're just gonna make do. Was there. Whoa. It doesn't look great. I'm just gonna tell you that right now. Because of the meltedness. Oh, oh no. Oh, my lord. Oh no. Oh, the humanity. Oh well. It is definitely creamy, whether by design or because it's simply melted. Look at that! It's pretty good though. Mmm. It's all over the wrapper. So you know what that means. Uh, 
because I'm an adult. I do adult things. This one's pretty good. It is very chocolatey. And chocolate is good. The next trick, can I get the rest of it out of the package? Because of the way it has torn. It's all gone horribly wrong. It's a mess in here. Look at that. Look at this sad, awful, horrific mess of stuff. I do quite like the chocolate. It is creamy. It is good. Nice milk chocolate stuff. Yum. Too bad most of it melted into a sad, gloopy mess on my wrapper. But enough about that. Let's move on to the next chocolatey thing. Oh no. Let's not. Let's let's put this one in the fridge first. All right. With that in the fridge, because <clears throat> boy was it a little squishy. Let's try Mosto Coloro. Look, I'm tired. I apologize, Grease. I'm ruining your language. But that's what I do every video because I'm a dumb American. What do you expect from me? It's a natural and artificial grape must flavor. What's must? M U S T. Must. Look, that's cookie. Let's eat the cookie. So it's a soft wheat cookie. There's more than one cookies. Uh, with grape must flavor. You don't often use the word musty to describe good things. No, you don't. Usually it refers to an old basement or someone's dirty socks. But we found the exception. These cookies are musty for a reason. They're made with actual grape must. Hold up! What exactly is must? Good question. It's a thick mixture containing freshly pressed juice, skins, seeds, and stems of the grape. Usually prepared as the first step in a wine crafting process. You could say that must is a must for winemaking. Stop. Need to be stopped. It's only when the winemaker decides the must is ready, a critical decision that affects the taste, that he or she extracts the grape juice from the skin, seeds, and stems to begin the process of fermenting the juice into wine. I didn't know it included stems for wine, but okay. Unfortunately for us, no, sorry, fortunately for us, the must made in uh, Kilkis, a city where the hills of northern Greece doesn't get turned into wine, instead it's turned into this traditional cookie. With a touch of cinnamon, these soft baked sweets are an absolute must. Again, stop. For any visitor to Greece. Let's try it! Hopefully, they will be in okay shape. Despite oh, being a little on the toasty side. Well, okay, you know, you said cookies, but there's one giant donut in here. It's in a cookie. It's a giant fat donut. It's practically a donut. We can call it a cookie. It's just a big, fat, soft cookie that looks an awful lot like a fat donut. Only missing half of it, I suppose. It does have that, uh... nutmeggy, kind of grapeish, cinnamony. Makes me think of holidays, fall, stuff like that. Ow. Slightly crumbly. Soft like bread. Crumbly. Now you know that raisins are made from grapes. Vaguely reminds me a little bit of raisins. Possibly because of the spices. But that's good. This is the kind of thing that I could see as like, you know how you make banana bread? Or other, you know, loaf breads? This would be like a good loaf bread. And then you just slice it. And then you just eat it. Okay. Well, no. No. Grape must cookie. Cookie. This is bread. This is the soft cookie. Come on. With bread. You've made bread. Into this shape. It's touching my leg with its nose. What are you doing down there? I don't know why you're making it harder than, 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 you know, usual and stuff. Yeah, it's still in there. You can't have it. You can't have grape cookies. Grapes aren't good for you, so I'm sure this is probably not either. No grapes for puppies. No grapes for puppies! Are you distraught by this information? You look so let down. Oh my god, why? Hello. Oh, that was too much. Don't eat too much to get dry. I need milk or water. You're not helping. You have no use to me. What do you do? What do you contribute to this household? Hmm? Besides being a space heater. Oh my god, I need water. He's like, I see it in there. It's just sitting there. By itself, unattended. Oh no! I don't know how much of this I'm gonna use. It's just you being yourself. I don't know how much of you being yourself the people want. 
I regret eating that much of the cookie. Don't do it. There's a whole mess in your mouth. This is not, it's not easy. It's not easy. Alright, I still have cookie in my mouth. It's like stuck down in here and up in here. But just gonna have to deal with it. The tiny dog is just gonna be himself. I'm not, I'm barely even holding him. He's just like, uh. Alright, next food. After shower snaggies. La la la, let's have oregano chips. Which I feel like I've eaten before. And I have a lot of oregano in my garden. Because, oh my god, it just keeps on growing. So if you ever grow oregano in your garden, be careful when it makes flowers and seeds. Because then it's going to get over like ground cover. And then it's like, Ugh! Like, I go mowing the lawn, and I mow over oregano, and it's like, mm, my lawn smells like oregano now. These are tortoise chips oregano. Oregano potato chips, in case you haven't already realized from the picture and from everything I've just said. If you end up going gaga over these Greek potato chips, you have one person to thank. Ioannis oh, Kapodistias, the first prime minister of Greece. Why? Because in addition to building schools, preparing the country for democracy, and creating jobs for women, he also is a die-hard supporter of the potato. What an odd thing to have, like, a claim to fame to. Like, I've created jobs for women, and also I support potatoes. Everyone supports potatoes. If you don't support potatoes... I'm watching you. Anywho! Uh, when he became Prime Minister in 1829, he dreamt of making Greece a potato hub, hoping it would boost the country's economy. He was so invested in putting down potato roots in Greece, pun intended, that he gave them away for free. Still, the public didn't see the appeal, so this island sounds really very familiar. Anywho. So, he hatched a new plan. He hired armed guards to- This- I read this before! Have I eaten these? Anyway, he hired armed guards to protect the next potato shipment. Lo and behold, that got the Greeks interested. Local farmers, convinced that the potatoes were valuable, started stealing them. And before long, the potatoes spread countrywide. Kind of ingenious, right? Almost as ingenious as the idea to pair potato chips with oregano. Better take a page from his book and guard these chips at all costs. I must have either eaten these or something. But I've read the story about that gentleman and his armed guards protecting the potatoes so that people went, Oh, I guess those are important. Potatoes are always important. They deserve armed guards at all times. Smells like oregano and potato chips. Mmm, good one. I'm so grateful. So, there's a potato chip with oregano. That's all there is to it, really. If you like potato chips, great. If you like an egg, great. There it is. This right there. Look at it. It's so beautiful. It's just waiting for you to eat it and love it and cherish it. Wait, hold on. We can do better. Look at the beautiful potato chip ready for you to be eating it. Oh, oh there you go. You got a snack. I don't know if you can hear that or not. If you don't like oregano, then these aren't for you. If you don't like potato chips, something's wrong with you. But, um, either way. They're tasty. I'm not sure what kind of sandwich they'd go with, but who cares? We've all eaten weirder chips with sandwiches before, so yeah. But get your hard arm guards, hire them, and get yourself some oregano potato chips. More snickets. Let's do Orientals. Saragli. Something, 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 something. Traditional Greek pastry. It looks tasty. Let's find out if it is. I'm sure it is. Syrupy phyllo dough pastry with almonds and walnuts. When exploring Greece, there are a few things you have to do. See the Parthenon, soak up the sun on a white sand beach, and try baklava. That's what I thought this was. We're not kidding. It's nothing short of a national treasure. You'd be hard-pressed to find a single Greek celebration, be it a wedding, holiday dinner, or birthday party without a platter of the syrupy, nut-filled sweet front and center. But rest assured, Greek baklava never gets boring. There are tons of different varieties to choose from. There's... Korkubinia, the itty-bitty size variety. Kataf... Kataifli? Kataifi? The kind made with stringy, shredded phyllo dough. And our personal favorite, Saragli. The, uh, this version takes all the elements of the original baklava, flaky dough, buttery syrup, almonds, and walnuts, and puts them in an oh so cute roll, creating the perfect party treat. Talk about letting the good times roll. <sighs> 
The puns will never stop, will they? Something tells us you won't have any problem checking try baklava off your Greece to-do list. I've had baklava, just probably not the kind that's actually from Greece. It's probably just like made here in America, even though we sort of maybe kind of sort of kind of got the idea, but don't really have it exactly. So let's open the package. And if I can open the package, as per usual. There we go. Oh, it's in a little tray. It looks like it got maybe a wee baby bit smashed still, but that's okay. It's got his own little tray. Little rolls in here. I don't, they might be stuck together. So I'm not sure what kind these are. Does this one specify? Like, is this just almonds? Hello? Almonds and walnuts. Oh, okay, cool. I didn't know if there was like, you know, maybe some pistachios involved or something. Smells like honey and pastry. Mm -hmm. I've always been kind of on the fence about whether or not I like baklava. I think it's because of the pastry itself. I like, you know, nuts with cinnamon, sugar, and all that, guys. I don't mind honey at all. Something to do with the dough. It just doesn't quite work for me. I don't know. This is a good sweet treat. I have the inner there. I like almonds and walnuts. I mean, I'll eat it. It's just the kind of dessert that I'm like, if I have other options, I'd probably pick something else. Again, don't dislike it. Just, I don't know. There's something not quite for me. In it, whatever for whatever reason. I don't know. It's weird. Everyone has their weird thing. This is mine. Here's the thing. I remembered that this month I was gonna try and do a fancy, fancy unboxing, a fancy dress. I forgot. I'm also already opening this without doing anything. I completely forgot, and I've already eaten like uh, half of a box. Uh, uh, you know. So uh, no fancy, fancy box uh, things this month. <laughs> Sorry. Anywho, welcome to Kritsin Krist uh, oh. Kritsinaki Pesto Basil. Uh, they're basil pesto breadsticks. Open this bag and you'll instantly notice one thing, the unmistakable scent of basil. That's uh, likely what Alexander the Great noticed too when he first discovered basil dotting the landscape of his newly acquired, new <laughs> acquired, conquered is the word in here that we, is more accurate, territory. That was back in 326 BC, and soon after, basil had become the hottest herb of the Greek elite. Some scholars believe basil was uh, exclusively harvested by kings who collected leaves using a golden scythe, which might explain why basil comes from the Greek. I'm gonna ruin this because I don't know any Greek at all, because they're little doodads over certain letters and things, but uh, basilicon is pH with an F or no? Futon. Shh, okay. Meaning royal plant. It's even said that they use the herb in a more unconventional way in perfume. Mm, I don't know how I feel about that. Greek royalty would strut about their palaces smelling like fresh cut basil. Which, now that we think about it, doesn't sound like such a bad idea. I mean... Eh. Still, we'll stick with the better use, applying these basil pesto flavored breadsticks to our mouths. I mean, basil smells good, but I don't want to... Smell like it? Smell like it? Ooh. Silly a little bread is oh, it fell out. A little bread thing, just you know. Not croutons. That's pretty much what it is. This is a little tiny bread sticky thing. And it's basil all over it. And probably some salt too. I mean some other stuff. What else we got in here? Hello! Salt, sir, spices, cheese powder. What? Well, not a whole lot to talk about here. It is what it is. It's one of those things where it's like... Ta-da! Ta ah. So if you like basil, and you like breadsticky things, here you go. It probably would be good in the salad, though. I'd imagine. I think! Okay, one less. Because it's chocolatey. It's more serenata. It's triplo. It looks like there are tatles, uh, hazelnuts involved. More wafers. And hazelnuts. And uh, some chocolate. 
Uh, where is it? This is milk chocolate coated hazelnut topped wafer with cream filling. So yes, I was right on all counts. Wouldn't it be cool if this deliciously creamy, chocolatey, oh so hazelnutty wafer had healing powers? Gets damaged, plus five healing. Anywho, if you asked an ancient Greek, they'd say it does. According to, um, not familiar with this particular person, Diosorides, a famous Greek botanist, physician, and author of a medicinal encyclopedia used for thousands of years, hazelnuts didn't just cure nut cravings, they cured tons of common ailments. For a nasty cough, he'd prescribe a mixture of pounded hazelnut and honey. For colds, cooked hazelnut and black pepper. He even created a cure for baldness. Charred hazelnut shells mixed with an animal fat smeared on receding hairlines across Greece. Yum? Question mark? Explanation point? No, that's not food! Son! This wafer might not do anything for your luscious locks, or lack thereof, but the whole uh, hazelnuts with a rich chocolate coating thing, it'll cure even the most colossal sweet tooth. Just with the doctor word. Oh, doctors back in the day, prescribing things that made no sense, with no theory behind them whatsoever. So this is what I put in my fridge a while ago. It's been out for a wee bit, so it wasn't, I didn't want it to be like rock hard. We didn't really know what to expect, but you know when you like put a Snickers and it's been too cold for too long and you bite into it and you're like, I've made a mistake and now my teeth are all broken. I didn't want that to happen. Uh, we're still kind of gooey. I have had it in there for a while. See, that's the problem with like shipping it post office style and they just shove it in your mailbox and it's 9 degree heat. This happens every year. Like every year my Yum's box shows up and it's in the mailbox. I can't get to it right away. I'm at work. I'm working to pay for the Yum's box. And it shows up and it's just melted to hell because it's in a metal box in 90 degree heat. So I'm sure it's like, I don't know, over a hundred in the box. So instead of whatever this is supposed to look like, I get some sort of sad, melted, half reconstituted mess. But as long as it tastes good and I don't get food poisoning, uh, I guess it works out. So, it's kind of like, uh, there's like a chocolate thingy up here, cream. You got a hazelnut, and then there's a wafer underneath. Again, more wafer. Don't understand this fascination, but okay. Eh, it's okay. Not really anything to write home about. It might be because the chocolate cream is like, I want it to be more a little bit darker and less sweet toothy. Like, sometimes chocolate, like, they make it too sweet and even I'm like, because mm. then it's like, then you're getting out of chocolate territory and into like sugar territory. So, mm. Like, this cream is like, mm. meh. Also, I don't know if it would be better if it wasn't already gooey. Usually chocolate gooey is better, but I don't know. It's hard to tell. So it's okay. I'm gonna do my best to eat it and not make a mess, but I guess that's how I'm finishing my night with the... <laughs> Hello, and welcome to another episode of Late Night Snacks. Cool. We have our yum bag, and that's literally all that we have left. So let's eat it. Not the bag. Don't be ridiculous. I'm not eating plastic. <laughs> Don't be absurd. We are going to eat candy. Well, one of each candy, I suppose, since there's uh, four of them. Oh, look how pretty they are, though. Like these are gems. Let's eat the soft one first, because it'll go faster. What a thing! Frugelli, pomegranate jelly. Jelly, sorry, I didn't say that like a normal human being. Warning, pomegranate is dangerous, at least according to ancient Greek myths. Legend has it that the Greek god of the underworld, Hades, fell madly in love with Persephone, the goddess of vegetation and the daughter of Zeus and Demeter. Is that right? Was it? Oh, anyway, uh, goddess of the harvest. Uh, not exactly a gentleman, Hades uh, kidnapped her, trapping her in the underworld. This is a very sad, very sad story. Sort of. Kind of. Anyway, when Demeter learned her daughter's fate, she became a recluse, and with both Persephone and Demeter gone, no crops grew. Hearing the cries of hungry mortals, Zeus, common... <laughs> Zeus commanded Persephone's release. Hades agreed, but first he fed her some pomegranate. Sounds nice, right? No! Hades. 
This is sneaky. Son of a gun. It's a trick. Food is forbidden in the underworld. So eating the pomegranate meant Persephone had to stay there for a portion of every year. That's how the Greek explained the seasons. Summer came when Persephone returned home, winter when she was bound to the underworld. Fortunately for you, Greece's view on pomegranate has shifted since ancient times. Today the fruit is actually considered lucky, often given at weddings, housewarming parties, and New Year's celebrations. That means you're free to enjoy this juicy pomegranate jelly no strings attached. It's a long story for a tiny candy. It's cute though, with this little frugally uh, thingamabobber on it. Oh no, wrong button. No! Let's eat! It's squishy. So it's like a gummy. It's all wrapped up in little paper. Whoop. Sugar. Oh, it's kind of it's kind of cute. It's like a little pink, little pink sparkly square. Oh, kind of don't want to eat it because it's cute. Oh, it's a, um, I'm at home. Oh, it's like one of those. Jelly is an app name because it's like it's like gummies are usually the like you know kind of chew like gummy bear. This is like the softer version where you just bite and it goes. Oh. The teeth just sink into it. Quite nice. I don't often get pomegranate as a flavor in anything that I've eaten. So this is a good change. I'm get that sugar. Alright. Yep. Yeah. If you get um, pomegranate snackies, eat them up because that's pretty good. I like a little bit of the, the crunch and the sugar on the outside. I've never eaten pomegranate, so now I have at least some inkling of what it tastes like. It tastes pretty good. So now we have, oh my, is it just me or does that say Uzo? <laughs> Even I know what that is. This is Cocos Uzo, Uzo flavored hard candy. I've never had that before ever. I don't think I've ever been in an area or situation to have it. Ready to taste Greek's most beloved, most famous, most popular drink? Question mark. Yep, this yum might come in the form of succulent hard candy, but it gets its flavor from a drink. And not just any drink. Uzo is derived from, uh, Sipuro, a strong grape brandy that was first crafted in the 14th century monks on the peaks of Mount Athos. When anise, a flowering plant with licorice-like flavor- Ugh. Oh, that's right! Doesn't ouzo take like licorice? <sighs> no. I don't like licorice. <coughs> anyway, was added to the recipe in 1830, the new version ouzo became an instant sensation. Cafes called Oozeries or Oozeries popped up as to go spots, go to spots for good conversation, scrumptious snacks like olives and feta cheese. I do love me some feta cheese. And so most olives. I need to try some of the actual Greek olives. Anyway, and of course, refreshing glass of Oozo. The drink is so beloved and uniquely Greek that in 2006 the country filed a case with the European Union to claim exclusive rights over Oozo sales and won. Nice. I, I like that. Not that way you don't have some Joe Schmo and his grandma just making a drink of it's Uzo. Shut up. So whether you love or hate its licorice flavor with this Uzo inspired alcohol free candy, you're tasting an iconic Greek flavor you literally can't get anywhere else. I appreciate that. I'm not gonna like it. Because I don't like licorice. So <clears throat> it smells like licorice. Here we go, home. It's a, it's a thing. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. Honestly, though, it's not, it's not that bad. I think it's because it's a little bit sweeter, and it's not like hardcore, like black licorice is like black licorice is like, hi, how you doing? This is more mellow. This is more like, how, let's shake hands, and if we'd like to be friends, that would be great. So initially, my like normal reaction is mm, no, but I'm actually kind of getting. I'm, get, I'm kind of okay with this actually. This is actually okay. I'm not. I don't. I don't hate it. I'm on the verge of actually saying I like it. Not all the way though. I'm just mostly there. Just almost like you know. It's, here's the meter and here's the I like it part. It's like it's kind of like right. You know. I like the. Okay. Let's go ahead and keep talking while I suck on this candy. Because the flavor's not gonna change, it's gonna just gonna stay like this. 
Uh, if we'd had the yum yum or a super gum box, we could have been some more snacking. Looks like breads and crunchy things. But we didn't get that because I'm only buying $14 worth of stuff. So <laughs> here we are. Here's the clue to next month's box. Also, I don't have Tiny Dog. He's in the other room. Probably asleep because it's like, that's okay. He'll come back in later. Where we're headed next, the symphonies give chills. You can hear them in the opera house, the castles, the hills. But when you taste the yums, the music will be eclipsed by world-famous chocolates and punchy red chips. I like the idea of punchy red chips. Who does operas? Italy? A lot of Italian opera. I've been to Italy. Twice, maybe. Alright, well, Greece, you were... You were alright. I wasn't wowed by anything. No disrespect. Everyone's tastes are different. I've, I think I've already mentioned it, but Greece, a lot of Greek food is just not to my palate. And it's one of those things where it's like, I know it's good. I know many people enjoy it. But for me, it's just not quite, eh, not quite there. So this was, you know, okay, Buck. It helps that maybe if some things weren't like, you know, horrendously melted, but <laughs> maybe that doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm gonna enjoy just I'm gonna just this here and fuck on my Uzo candy. Thanks for joining me. Keep coming back if you like by pressing the subscribe button or not. I don't. I mean, I don't get anything from doing these videos. I'm just here for the the giggles and the nonsense and the hoo ha and the whatnot and the weird faces that you get when I'm weird. So I guess whatever whatever you want to do. It's either way. It's late and I should probably go and stop. Blather. I you have things to do. Okay, bye. Why don't you show the people what you're doing? You're just licking my arm. Am I trying to send to the doggo show?